Very welcome back to the channel, everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the mysterious keywords that you've seen in your Solidity contract, storage and memory. And uh, these are important keywords to know if you want to become a full-fledged Solidity developer. And they're also very important to know because if you screw up and you pick the wrong storage location, the wrong data location, your contract can behave in very, very weird ways. So very important to learn the difference between storage and memory, these keywords that we use when we declare variables in Solidity. So that's what we're going to go through today. But before I get started with explaining the difference and showing the code where we screw up, I want to remind you that we have a special deal going on over at uh, the Ivanon Tech Academy where I teach. We are uh, rolling out new courses each and every month this year and uh, I want you to be there. So we have created a special deal where you can get access to the entire academy with all of our courses for only $299. And that is uh, around, I think, 50% off from the original deal of $49 every month. If you get the uh, one year deal, you get uh, all of our courses throughout the year and all of our live streams and Q&A's and so on. So it's a fantastic package and I wish to see you down there. So click the link in the description for the special deal. With that being said, let's go into this topic. So I've made a very short slide here where I want to uh, point out the differences between storage and memory and then I'm going to show you the code. And these are the two different keywords that we can put uh, after the type when we declare a variable. And it specifies where the data is going to be saved. If we write storage or we, if we save things in storage, they are stored globally, meaning that they are available in the entire contract, in all of the functions and outside the functions, wherever you want. They're also stored permanently, meaning that even, even though uh, it doesn't matter if you're sending a transaction or executing a function or not doing anything at all, the Ethereum network will save your variable forever until the contract is removed. And this is used in state variables, the variables that we de declare in the actual contract, not in the functions, but in the contract itself. Those are global, they are permanent, so they are saved in storage. Now, the other type that is commonly used for developers is memory. And this is in sharp contrast to the storage option. These uh, variables are local, they are temporary, and they're of course used then for local variables meaning and, and arguments but i'll get to that for local variables that means variables that we declare within function bodies and whenever we declare a variable in memory in a function body that will only be saved as long as the function execution continues when the execution is done meaning you've come to the end of the function uh, all of the memory stored variables will be removed they won't be saved permanently and the same is, of course, true for arguments. If you pass in arguments to a function, they will also be saved in this temporary storage called memory. And they will be forgotten once the function execution is over. And now it's actually time to look at this um, in a Solidity contract that I've prepared in Remix. And there you can see really how bad uh, of a mistake you can make if you don't know the difference between storage and solidity and you mix them up with each other and you do this uh, big mistake where your data actually isn't saved. So take a look at this contract here. I hope that you can see it. Let's zoom in a bit more. We have a mapping, uh, mapping from IDs to uh, a user struct so we can keep, keep uh, so we, we keep track of users and users is a struct. They have an ID and a balance. We can add users. We can update the balance of users and we can get the balance of users and there is a vital flaw in this contract in regards to how we have used the memory keyword here in update balance and many of you probably see it already but i'm going to show you what the issue is and then i'm gonna talk about it and explain what is going on so if we attempt to deploy this we create let's see is my face in the way it is in the way there we go if we add a user, let's just say ID one balance of hundred, we add that and it has been added. We can get the balance of that user. It is 100. Ah, you can almost not see it. There we go. It is 100. Now, if we go ahead and update this balance, so let's say we set it to 200, update balance, that transaction goes through without a problem, right? But when we then get the balance again, it is still 100. 
what the hell is going on? Why isn't this updating? We're taking the user here from the array, which is, or oh, sorry, the mapping, and that is a state variable with the ID that we provided. We changed the balance. Why isn't it updating? Well, if you remember now, the memory keyword, the memory data location is just for storing variables temporarily. The mapping here however, is a state variable that is saved in storage. But whenever we do like this and we take a variable that is stored in, in storage and we assign it to a variable that is in memory, that means that we copy the data from storage to memory. No longer, there is no longer no connection between this variable here, user that is stored in memory and the state variable users, the mapping here. There's no connection there. We've just made a copy of the user in question. And then we change the copy, but we don't update it uh, in the mapping. So there are multiple ways that you can solve this problem. One would be, of course, to write storage here instead. So user storage, now it, this variable is now saved in storage as well. And that means that this is now a reference to this mapping up here. And when we change the balance of that user, we're changing it in the mapping. Another way of solving it would be to just get rid of all of this and just get, oops, the reference to users, change the balance like that. That would also be a direct modification of this mapping here that is in the uh, state uh, variable in storage. And a third way would be to uh, up to the user balance like that. We have memory here again, like we had before, the bad way. And then we set users ID equal to user. That would work as well, but this solution is not very clean and it has unnecessary copies back and forth. So the cleanest way, in my opinion, is some of the, the previous ones. And this is probably the clearest one, where we actually explicitly state that we're storing it in storage and um, that means that we actually reference the value that is in the, the state variable here. Let's try this out for a second. Let's deploy it. Let's add a user. The same thing we did last time, add a user with 100 balance. And then we can try to get that. It has 100 in balance. We update it to 200. And we get the balance and now it's 200. So this is the mistake that I was talking about because now it's fixed with storage, but if you had memory here, because you didn't know what storage or memory did, you just type the one that uh, maybe is most, uh, most popular, then you would have an issue because you would think that you're actually updating the balance of your user, but you're not doing any of that. And if you're not careful and you're not have, if you don't have unit tests or any other sort of checks and balances, you can deploy a contract with ha which has huge flaws. So I hope that you learned something uh, from this today. And if you're interested in these types of uh, videos and lectures, we have a full course dedicated to smart contract programming over at Ivanon Tech Academy, where I teach. So you can join us in the link in the video description, and you'll be taken to a special deal where you can join for the rest of the year. And uh, a ton of new courses coming out there as well in the future. We'll go deep into Solidity and Truffle. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to doing that with you. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment about um, this uh, data location subject for Solidity. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more type of content like this. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.